Hello, my name is John Kelly and this is the Weber Auto YouTube channel. This is the second in a series of videos on universal joints. And in this episode we will be comparing universal joints, aftermarket replacement universal joints to original factory universal joints uh, to the uh, Spicer brand uh, universal joints. And so what I have here uh, to get us started uh, on the table here, I have eight different uh, universal joints, uh, different uh, brands, different part numbers, uh, different uh, manufacturers, and I, I want to take you through a little experiment I did. Uh, there's there's no no real specifications that I've seen for testing uh, U joints, and so I just kind of came up with some comparisons of my own and. I was really kind of shocked at the at the difference in uh, what I perceive as quality, and uh, I want to show show that to you. So uh, let's begin with uh, showing you which which universal joints uh, I tested. Um, I've got a brand here. Uh, I'm not quite sure how to pronounce that. N e a p c o uh, Neepco, possibly um, that we tested. I have one that's Parts Master. Uh, I have an AC Delco uh, aftermarket replacement. I have a Moog replacement. I have a Duralast uh, aftermarket uh, replacement U-joint. Uh, All of those U-joints are aftermarket replacements for the original factory U-joints uh, uh, on a lot of vehicles. And the factory U-joints, um, I have a General Motors uh, brand new uh, factory replacement U-joint. This is the, the same one that came in, came in the vehicle that we'll be working on over here. I have a Toyota uh, brand new uh, replacement U-joint uh, for a, a Toyota vehicle. And then I also have a Spicer uh, replacement for the same um, vehicle. Now, not all of these U-joints are for the exact same vehicle. Uh, four of these are U-joints that have an internal uh, C-clip, a clip that goes on the inside of the U-joint ears. Four of these have a clip that goes on uh, the outside. And they're just ones that I had here um, from previous classes that I wanted to do a comparison on. So one of the first things uh, that I wanted to do was to just take them apart and see uh, what parts they had, what what the quality of the parts uh, looked like, the machine work, and so on. And so some of these, uh, when I took them apart, and I've got uh, the needle bearings, the seals, the snap rings, and so on, uh, the first thing I did was to grab a digital caliper and measure the thickness of the snap rings that come in the kit and this was the most <laughs> revealing uh, shocking portion uh, to me uh, was they all came with with different thicknesses of snap rings um, this uh, Niepco uh, brand came with snap rings that I measured at 57 and a half thousandths thick uh, this uh, parts master they were 55 thousandths thick uh, the Toyota came with two snap ring thicknesses a 60 thousandths of an inch and a 58 thousandths uh, the Moog came with a 57 and a half so pretty much a 58 so not all of these came with the same uh, snap ring thickness and another thing that I've discovered is when you remove the previous u-joint that was in the drive shaft you really need to hang on to those snap rings be very careful with them don't destroy them clean them up measure their thickness see 
how thick they are because you actually, even though snap rings are not intended to be reused, uh, you may actually have to reuse them. Uh, say, for example, a, a vehicle came in a, with, right out of the factory, 60 thousandths of an inch thick snap rings. And then you buy this aftermarket kit here that came with 55 thousandths of an inch uh, thick snap rings. Just by installing that U-joint, if, if nothing else went wrong, just by putting in snap rings that are five thousandths of an inch each thinner, you've now installed ten thousandths of an inch of what's called axial play. Axial play is the amount of movement that a U-joint will move up and down inside of the bearing cups or inside of the U-joint ears below the snap ring itself. Uh, just by changing the U-joint, you put in 10 thousandths of an inch uh, axial play. And you probably didn't realize you did. You didn't measure it. You had no reason to, to measure it. There are no instructions that say measure your old snap rings and compare them to the, the new ones and make sure that you're within a certain specification. Well, there is a certain specification. But this is one of those things, the, this topic of universal joints is one of these areas where a lot of people think, I don't need to read instructions for these. I know how to change a U-joint. And, and so they just change it the way they've seen other people change it or the way they've been taught to change it and then take out the old snap rings, take out the old universal joint, put in the new universal joint, put in the new snap rings, and away you go. And as I mentioned in the first episode of this series, uh, Sometimes I get questions from uh, students or technicians saying, hey, I changed the U-joint and now I've got a vibration. What did I do wrong? Well, that alone can cause a vibration because if that U-joint allows the entire drive shaft to slip to one side to, by 10 thousandths of an inch, you've just increased the propeller shaft or drive shaft run out by 10 thousandths of an inch. So instead of that propeller shaft or drive shaft just spinning, it's orbiting it's wobbling as it as it drives down the road and that certainly can cause a uh, vibration so that was the first thing that i checked on all of these uh, over here on the uh, internal clip snap rings uh, there's one that's 61 and a half thousandths thick uh, there's one that's 96 another one that's 96 and one that is 92 thousandths of an inch uh, thick. So the, the snap rings are all over the place. Well, come to find out, uh, you can purchase uh, different thicknesses of snap rings depending on who made the, the universal joint or who made the vehicle that you're working on. Uh, in the small parts catalog from uh, Spicer, they have this big table and depending on what year you're looking in, you, there's different part numbers for different thicknesses of universal joint snap rings. And so uh, back here on this board right here, uh, I've got this labeled U-joint selective snap rings. And here on the, on the left, uh, these are snap rings if you're installing them in a steel yoke. So a steel yoke at the end of the drive shaft or a steel yoke as far as the pinion uh, companion flange, you they come, th they have many different sizes of uh, snap ring thicknesses, I guess. Many different thicknesses of snap rings w is the right way to say that. Okay, so I've zoomed in on this board, and over here on the left for steel yokes, I have a blue, pink, yellow, white, copper colored, no color at all, and purple and they go as thick as 65 thousandths of an inch. So here's 65, 63, 62, 61, 59, 58, 57. Uh, according to Spicer, the 59 thousandths of an inch one, the copper colored one, is the most common one if you're using a Spicer U-joint in a Spicer drive shaft. Most drive shafts of uh, major manufacturer uh, vehicles, especially pickup trucks, are definitely made by uh, Spicer. Um, 
through Dana Corporation. All right, and then over here on the right, for aluminum yokes, so you've got an, alu an aluminum drive shaft. It'll have aluminum ears on the end of the, the yoke on that drive shaft. It has special coated uh, snap rings, and they come in four different thicknesses, anywhere from the 59, which was the, the same as the copper one over here. They have a 59, 60, 61, 62, so four different thicknesses of coated snap rings. Now, why are they coated? Uh, they're, they're coated with a zinc oxide, um, no, a zinc phosphate uh, coating. And so is the U-joint uh, bearing caps, or so are the U-joint bearing caps that come for universal joints that are installed in aluminum drive shafts. So if you look at these two bearing caps, they're nice and shiny, they're not coated. This bearing cap and the other one that, that uh, comes with it, they're coated so that they don't have an electrochemical reaction with the aluminum and have corrosion occur uh, over time. So there are special U-joints for aluminum ears in on aluminum drive shafts. There are special snap rings for uh, aluminum uh, ears in drive shafts. All right, and then down here at the bottom, uh, they have, I've got four different thicknesses, but there, there are others also. If you have a bearing cap that has a grease zerk sticking out at the side of it, then it takes a special uh, snap ring that allows for that grease zerk to be there. And they come in four different thicknesses. We've got a 59, 60, 61, and 62 uh, thousandths of an inch uh, snap ring. And this is a, a Spicer service bulletin dated September 9, 2010, or 2011, saying that they have gone to these colored and multi-thickness uh, snap rings so that you can properly set the axial end play of the U-joint in your drive shaft. So, um, when you install a universal joint in a drive shaft, when you get it all installed, these bearing caps should not be preloaded. In other words, in other words, squished, squished so hard that the the U joint doesn't want to even turn. Uh, you've probably seen uh, U joint replacements like that where you you get done installing it and the the yoke at the end of the, the drive shaft that you just installed is, is difficult to, to move up and down. Um, you don't want that to happen. And that could be an installation issue where the bearing uh, cups have just been driven in too far and they need to be driven back out to take up the play between the bearing cap and the snap ring. Or it may be that the snap rings are just too thick and there's, the only way you could get them in was to totally squish um, and spread the ears on the end of the drive shaft to where you could pound in the uh, snap ring and, and barely make it fit. Well, th that's no good. That'll cause premature failure uh, of the universal joint. Uh, it takes the U-joint ears out of uh, alignment. They are line board and uh, you, you can bend them and, and of course, that ruins them, and it'll cause the U-joint to fail uh, prematurely uh, as well. So, uh, snap rings was just one thing in this universal joint comparison uh, that I looked at. Oh, by the way, the, the uh, General Motors version of the U-joint, um, let me open this one up, comes with a bag, two bags, uh, one of them with the copper 59 thousandths snap rings and then another bag with the white or the pink uh, snap rings. So you get the 59, the 63, and the 61s. Uh, and it, it has instructions on how to pick them uh, to install them. And it also comes with instructions telling you that once you take these bearing caps off, don't put them on another trunnion. These are, this is called a trunnion here at the end of the U-joint cross. Each bearing cap needs to stay on the uh, trunnion that it 
um, came off of, and that's because these are pre-lubed, uh, lubricated for life. These do not have a grease zerk. And that is another thing that uh, is a, something to compare one universal joint to another, is almost all aftermarket replacement U-joints come with a zerk uh, to grease the universal joint with. Uh, for years and years, I really thought that was uh, the best way to go. But in doing this uh, research project here on these universal joints, uh, I don't think that's the case any longer. Um, and to prove that to you, I want to show you um, another uh, board that I put together here that compares um, the original factory U-joint to an aftermarket uh, replacement U-joint. Okay, I've zoomed in now on this board, and I have a Spicer original equipment universal joint and everything that comes with it here on the right half of this board, and an aftermarket replacement joint over here on the, the right hand half of this joint. So, the uh, the thing I want to point out to you as far as lubrication and why I think a, uh, a, a factory sealed without a grease zerk is a better way to go, a U-joint, is that we, if you look at the bearing cup that we have down here to the bottom, it has a, a needle bearing spacer and then a thrust washer and then the needle bearings all down inside. And in reading the information from Spicer, uh, about this design, uh, the needle spacer helps the uh, roller bearings to move more easily so they don't uh, end up uh, brindling or causing little grooves to occur in the, in the uh, cross. Uh, it has a thrust washer at the thrust end of the U-joint cross where it contacts the, the inside of the bearing cap so that there's no metal-to-metal contact, uh, which means it has less friction, it's, it's a little more efficient. Uh, and then it has a triple lip seal. So this is a seal that has to be driven down in. You don't just push it on with your thumb and, and away you go. Uh, I had to pry it out and it ruins it to pry it out, but it has three lip seals. And if you're not familiar with a lip seal, a lip, a lip seal is a seal that points down and it anything that tries to come up against it will cause the seal to get tighter. And so any of the, the original factory lubrication that's stored in a little reservoir in the end of this trunnion here um, will be held in place by these triple lip seals. And then to protect the seal, they have what's called a seal guard that keeps dirt and snow and uh, any, anything else from even coming in contact with the seal itself. If you damage the seal, of course, the the grease can come out. This these uh, U joints are spinning at a, a high rate of speed, uh, three, four thousand RPM, depending on your uh, final drive gear ratio, uh, as you drive down the road. And that centr uh, centrifugal force, uh, or centripetal force, whichever camp you're from, um, wants to have that grease go out and lubricate those bearings but if you don't have a good set of seals to hold that grease in the grease will work its way out and then you'll run out of uh, lube and the and the bearing will fail well let's compare that now to the um, aftermarket replacement the aftermarket replacement u-joint just came with this little flimsy rubber seal it does have a single lip inside of it. I was able to see that lip. It has the same number of needle bearings and then it just has a bearing cup. We have metal to metal contact on the thrust end. We have nothing to promote rotation of the needle bearings like the uh, needle spacer over here. And if you forget to constantly, um, uh, every uh, oil change, add some extra grease in here, uh, which, how many oil change places check U-joints for uh, grease zerks, um, you are going to be losing a lot more grease out of this flimsy seal than you would ever lose out of this one. If you think about it, how long does an original U-joint, 
on a brand new vehicle last? It lasts a very long time in most cases. Almost all original U-joints are the factory sealed U-joints without a grease zerk. Um, without a grease zerk, uh, there's nobody's pumping in the wrong grease. Nobody's forgetting to grease it. The grease is held in place by good lip seals. This is a good, good way to go. All right, so that's that's another thing as far as comparing uh, factory U-joints to uh, the cheap aftermarket U-joints. Uh, but then there's another big, <laughs> big thing uh, that I noticed when I was comparing these U-joints, and that is if I take a digital caliper and I measure how far it is across, for, if I compress these in a vise, across bearing cap to bearing cap this way versus this way. On this U-joint, and I'm calling that compressed U-joint uh, cross width variance, the variance in width from this dimension to this dimension on the factory original Spicer U-joint was one thousandth of an inch. On this one, it was seven thousandths of an inch. Seven thousandths. That means it was seven thousandths wider in one direction than it was in the other. So <laughs> when you go to put this in the in your drive shaft and, and yoke, the snap rings uh, might be too tight in one direction, too loose in the other. Uh, it's just not a good machined, good quality control uh, process. Another thing that I did that I thought was interesting was I've got a scale uh, right here. And so I took these uh, factory U-joints uh, and I measured them as far as their weight and then I measured the the aftermarket ones and these aftermarket ones uh, in most cases are heavier um, and a heavier U-joint is not a good thing as far as vibrations are concerned think about a, a U-joint for a moment it, with it spinning if you make something that's spinning at a high rate of speed heavier and U-joints are not constant velocity joints. So this, these U-joints are speeding up and slowing down twice per revolution. As it speeds up and slows down, if it's heavier, is it going to be harder or easier to speed up and slow down every time? It's going to be harder. And it'll end up causing what's called moments of inertia, which end up with a vibration. So even if you install the, the snap rings perfectly, your axial play perfectly, uh, everything was done right, but it's just a heavier U-joint. The heavier U-joint could promote uh, a vibration that was not there uh, before. Um, okay, uh, not all of these U-joints were this bad. The, the cross width uh, vari variance of seven thousandths of an inch. There was one of the uh, aftermarket U-joints that it was exactly the same. It was better than the Spicer. It was uh, exactly at zero. But then it came with the wrong width of snap rings and no instructions telling you to install uh, any different snap rings. And so you would still end up with a vibration from the incorrect snap rings, incorrect axial play. So a lot of vehicle manufacturers have instructions. If you look in the actual factory instructions on how to replace a U-joint, they will give you... Uh, the the thicknesses of the different snap rings that you can get to control that axial play, that axial movement, the up and down movement of the U-joint installed in the drive shaft itself. And for the most part, most of those specifications are less than two thousandths of an inch. It's like 1.97 thousandths of an inch. Uh, some manufacturers don't have any spec at all. They just say, check for looseness. Well, <laughs> okay. Uh, no instructions on what looseness means. If it, Looseness to me might mean a different thing uh, than to someone else. And so in another episode coming up, I'll, we'll put a dial indicator on uh, drive shafts in the vehicle and on the workbench to actually check this axial play, which is the up and down. We'll check the radial play, which is the rotational of movement and we'll play with some different snap ring thicknesses to see what happens there but 
the end result should be if you install a U-joint properly with the appropriate snap ring, you will have end play. We do, we do not want preload on these bearings, but we don't want too much end play either. So we want a tiny bit of end play, but not preloaded. And that's kind of a tricky uh, thing to do, especially if you don't have if your uh, kit didn't come with additional snap rings. Uh, so what I would recommend is that every time you replace a U-joint, you keep those old snap rings. And the ones that aren't sprung, the ones that aren't damaged, clean them up, measure them, start collecting, start making yourself a snap ring collection of different thicknesses, uh, because you never know when you're gonna end up needing one to make sure that the U-joint that you've installed uh, is installed uh, properly. Um, uh, after doing all this research, and it's, it's not really a surprise to me, but I'm a firm believer in installing the factory parts rather than uh, some aftermarket parts. I know some people will uh, t take issue with that and claim that they've never had problems with it, but how would you know? Uh, uh, if you install a U-joint and it fails prematurely, uh, does that mean it fails in one year rather than 10 years? Uh, you know, do you keep track of things that long? Uh, obviously, if it's installed really wrong, uh, it really poorly, then it could, it could come back with a, uh, or come back sooner. Oh, there was one other thing I wanted to sh uh, show you the difference um, I've got on this U joint here. This is the one uh, it says made in USA, but right here on the box it says made in China. So I don't know which one <laughs> which one to believe. But if I wipe off the grease and look at this bearing surface, and then we compare that to the bearing surface of a factory U joint. Look how shiny the factory U-joint bearing surface is. So here's the factory U-joint bearing surface. Here's the aftermarket U-joint bearing surface. This is highly uh, polished, a fine machine, a real smooth uh, surface, where this one is kind of dull. And this one here, uh, the uh, Parts Master brand, if you look closely at the uh, surface of that machined area there, it's all beat up. It looks like it was uh, put in a, um, looks like it was machined and then tossed into a big uh, pile with other ones. It's got all these uh, dents and dings all over on the machine surface, which I've seen on uh, the other U-joint bearing crosses that are here uh, also. So that is another thing. Uh, the bearing surface itself being not as refined is going to going to end up causing a premature failure in my opinion uh, also okay so we've learned about different snap ring thicknesses we've learned about cross width variation we've learned about different seal types different lubrication uh, methods um, different weights and that pretty much will finish this, this episode. Uh, in, the, in one of the f next episodes that we'll be working on, we'll get into the diagnostics where you'll actually measure that and then put this knowledge uh, to work by setting the proper play once you remove and reinstall the U-joint. Uh, Have a good day.